Hey, it's Jamie Moore here. The Off The Ball League of Ireland podcast coming from a very special venue. We're at Supreme Altitude in Bray for the Suicide or Survive charity cycle. And we're here with our Graham Kelly, first team coach of Bray, and Keith Kelly from Suicide or Survive Charity. Graham, firstly, explain to me what myself, yourself, and a load of League of Ireland coaches and managers are about to do, please. We're about to go into a spinning class in a heated altitude chamber that will be roughly about 50 degrees heat, um, and there'll be about 15% oxygen in the room. So you're in for a tough 40 minutes. And you've been doing this for the whole month of June, and you've just completed your 300 kilometres, so uh, you've been doing it longer than me, for sure. Yeah, definitely, yeah. I've done a couple of classes before, but then from the 1st of June up until last Monday there, I just got over the 303 kilometres, so uh, delighted with that, you know, and to help out the charity is great. So if I'm struggling, you'll be able to give me some advice? I'll give you a pat on the back. <laughs> Graham, I need your time for 30 seconds. Close that door so the noise isn't there. 40 seconds, 40 minutes and 21 seconds. You're last out the door. Well done, sir. Yeah, no, the challenge is 40 minutes, so I'll do my best to try and stay there for the 40 minutes. Not easy, but enjoyable. Some of us so-called journalists and so-called footballers and football managers didn't last the time, but uh, you've managed to do it. It's quite tough, though. Very tough, in fact. It is very tough. In fairness to the lads, some of them have games and uh, are coming back from injury, so I can understand in yourself, you know, you, you have a long day ahead of you, so no problem with that, Jamie, coming out. I've been, give, I've been excused. Lastly, before we uh, go back to the Carlisle grounds and have a cup of tea and a few bickies, um, you've done this so many days in a row now. How have you managed to do it? Tough, it's tough, and in fairness to the lads, you know, they've given me a bit of a nutrition plan um, to help me through what if I to eat and when to drink water and that, you know. Jay Bourne's excellent here, you know, give him a shout out and a thanks for that. And uh, yeah, it's got me through it, you know, so I'll keep going, a few more days. So, we've just done the altitude chamber, supposedly, but I bottled it after 20 minutes. Aaron Green is just out, having done an hour on Sunday. Green, you're out with an knee injury, nearly back. Tell me about what we've just done. Uh, the only reason we started doing it was for Graham for... Suicide, uh, suicide and survive. It touches close to me and my wife. We lost a friend, so through it, through uh, suicide. So the reason I started doing it was um, for my fitness, and then Graham was telling me everything what he was doing it for. So um, great to give him a bit of, uh, moral support. So and great for my fitness because I've been out injured the last 12 weeks. So it's great to get my cardio fitness back up. So you, you yep. do go to a dark place and you ask yourself, Jesus, what, why is it me a second time around? At the end of the day, it's my third knee operation on Friday. So. Um, especially in the League of Ireland, a lot of lads don't get paid a lot of money and it's the case where you do have to call it a day, whether it be injury or age. You ask yourself, well, what happens now? Because a lot of players don't plan for it. I'm lucky enough that I'm in my final year of my degree, I might have something to fall back on come the end of next year. But a lot of lads don't and that, that's, that's the grim, grim thing of when injury hits, what happens after that. Talk to me first about the mental toughness that you need to spend that long in England and the challenges that you're posed with as a 16-year-old to the age of 20 being over there or the ages that you went to, in around that age. Yeah, look, it's it's quite tough. You live away, you live. I left my family at 15, so going away to live in a different country by yourself, it's tough. It's not easy, but uh, I got people around me which helped me. My family looked after me, but some people might might not have all the stuff I had, so. It's quite tough, and I can see people. It's it's a huge issue, and some people. It's big and very big in football as well. So, Graham Kelly's doing it for a great cause and fair play to him. With Captain Tidy's Kieran Marty Waters, who's still a current pro. How did you find that? It's one of the toughest things I've ever done, for sure. Like, but uh, just in the last ten minutes, we get Jeb breathing. Then, my God, that that was the hardest thing. But getting the forty minutes done with Graham Kelly, uh, I was delighted, delighted to get that done now. Yeah, of course, you've got a connection with Graham through Bray as well, and he's been doing this for the last almost a full month now. So for a few League of Ireland people to be able to jump in for a day is is a small help to him, but but still a help all the same. Oh yeah, like he, he asked me to do it yesterday, and I was there was no thing behind it. I just said yeah, you know what I mean. It's help a brother out, but uh, as well with Key Kelly, Key Kelly from Ballybrack, very close to home for me as well, and he's been running it for the last year or two. So the more support he gets, the the further it will go, you know. So. Hopefully next on there'll be more pros coming down doing it. So. Tim, I was speaking to Graham in the Carlisle earlier on and we were just talking about the lack of males in sport that opened up about problems and you've played at the top level, you're now managing at the top level as well. It's a problem that we hope 
you know, things like this that Graham is doing might might help if someone is a little bit down, they've come home from England or they've not got this or they've not got that or they break up with their girlfriend or whatever that they can talk to someone. Yeah, I think in uh, in general society, um, it's probably one of the positive things from social media that uh, people do open up a bit more now. Um, they certainly didn't maybe 10, 15 years ago when social media didn't really exist and it was face-to-face contact. It might be a bit easier now to put something up and on your phone if you're sitting there feeling down, but... Uh, no, listen, it's a, it is a who in sport as well because uh, it's all about being macho and having the right attitude and being mentally strong and whatnot. But um, I think there's a lot more resources now for, for people to tap into um, within sport and coming to the end of my career in, in Scotland. I know Hibbs brought in um, a psychologist fellow to talk to if you had any issues in regards to your football or anything personal life and whatnot. And I know a lot of players start tapping into that and um, it's, it can only be a positive thing. And um, Suicide is an epidemic in this country and... Um, there's many reasons behind suicide, but if there's avenues there for people to talk to, it's, it's certainly a, a good thing. And that's the difference, and that's the bravery, I suppose, of being a keeper, that it's it's hero or villain, really. Yeah, exactly, and I suppose going back to that one, when you make the mistake about other people's reactions, I think that depends on the individual that makes the mistake, you know, so, for example, if, if you're the type of person that needs that reassurance and that, then the manager might come in, if, if you can identify that, come in and put the arm around you, look, it happens, you know, you... you move on to the next one in a mid-season game it's obviously easier that that game was his last game of the season he has to wait a couple of months for another game but you're going to have the individual then as well that doesn't want to speak to anybody doesn't want to say a word to anybody I know when I was a little bit younger I'd go home and I'd, I'd literally I wouldn't want to speak to anybody after after a mistake even if the mistake didn't cost us the game or cost us, you know I, I just I'd beat myself up inside and I needed that time just to beat myself up and then when I woke up the next day I could relax again you know and, and, and get on with my uh, with my job if people want to help out want to see what you're doing and want to donate where do they go uh, there's a link on my own Twitter page which is at Graham Kelly 1888 it's a pinned tweet there's a link on there as well um, and it's it's on Facebook and uh, I'm sure we can share it later on yeah I'll put them up on my own Twitter and Facebook as well at Jamie Moore Sport if you want to have a look we'll have some videos up of us in the uh, chamber later on as well. Can that be also quite pressurised, if that's the right word, that you're kind of in this bubble of four years of, you know, important exams, important football matches, important gym sessions and so on, and it can become, I know I spoke to Greg Slogger recently and he was just saying, it's fantastic, but at times it can become quite full on yeah definitely if you have you have a full day college then you've training in the evening it's, it's tough going like trying to fit your meals in in between and you have to eat right as well so you can't just grab something quick in the shop or something like so there's a lot of preparation maybe the night before if you have to cook a decent dinner the night before and have it ready for the day uh things like that but i'm like in ucd if if you have a word with the manager the staff like and if you have an exam coming up or if you need time off for studying like they're very cooperative like they let you do that they let you take the time off or whatever right our final port of call here in supreme altitude and brace to speak to the two men who've put us through the pain barrier over the last supposedly 40 minutes i lasted 20 uh billy Kavanagh on my left who took the class and uh, craig williams who didn't take the class but asked us all to sign our lives away in case we didn't get through the the class but we did thankfully uh, Billy firstly the lads really pushed through just talk to me about Graham Kelly who's been doing this since the start of June and has got through 300 kilometres and is still going Graham Kelly's absolutely brilliant you see there some supposedly professional athletes and they're struggling they get out after 20 minutes Graham's right in there full 40 minutes doing the whole lot he never gets out early always does on the level that you tell him to do it he's had to do 300k in less than 30 days he was given 30 days to do and he's done it in less and he's raised a lot of money for a great cause so he's absolutely brilliant great to have down here in the gym just explain to me keith a little bit about the charity suicide or survive and, and why this event is on um suicide or survive is a local charity and we run um, educational therapeutic programs nationwide um, and i know a lot of the lads up here and um i asked them to come on board um, and they've come up with this idea of the 300k cycle um, and it's sort of you know because we want people to understand that you get mental health benefits from physical activity as well um, and the response has been huge I mean it's, it's been really brilliant